You saw with four seconds for the win. Yes! Mark is one of the more competitive people you'll meet. You ain't losing. That willingness to go out and try to compete every day, not just wait for a game, not wait for a regular season game, not wait for a playoff game, but every day is what made Mark special. He was a big part of that identity, right? And a big part of that's why the, the team was so successful, because he had that anchor in him. The Grizzlies, to this day, wouldn't be the Grizzlies without the contribution of Mark Gasol. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. I'm 10 feet ahead of you, kiss me, it's something you'll never do I turn around and I level you, no motivation is needed Look, I put myself on the pedestal, well, this is incredible Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app Go all access and behind the scenes It's got to be heavy defense, that's where it starts for us Personalized to where you are and who you are Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide And your own app customization right at your fingertips Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today there was some sad news coming out of the WWE. Michael Jones, also known as Virgil, passed away. He's a Virginia Union alum, so he graduated from an HBCU. He got his start in Memphis, right? Oh, man, you're absolutely right. With CJ Hurt and Mike Wallace. New episodes drop every Thursday on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and Spotify. Did I invent this, Loki? Did you? I spent years calling my ex-producer, Cowboy Carson, and now Beyonce. She and decides she, she, wants to, she wants to dabble in country, in the genre. Now she's calling her album Cowboy Carter. When she's doing her next concert, okay. and she says, hey, my new album's about to come out, uh, Cowboy Carter. I inspired just, by The Gary Parrish Show. Shout out GP in yeah. Memphis. The Gary Parrish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Anticipate each challenge. Make a quick response. Capitalize on every opportunity and win. Greatness won't wait. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by January 12th. And you can receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account and be entered into our Grizzmas drawing. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic, you know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. Oh, I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at fluffyguy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. Students, get back to the grind and cheer on your Memphis Grizzlies at FedEx Forum. Don't miss out on our exclusive student ticket program presented by Big River Steel. Get affordable tickets for all the major showdowns, including matchups against the Lakers, Warriors, Nuggets, Celtics, and more. Sign up today to get alerts about this exclusive deal at grizzlies.com slash students. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. You saw with four seconds for the win. Yes! Mark is one of the more competitive people you'll meet. You yeah, ain't losing. That willingness to go out and try to compete every day, not just wait for a game, not wait for a regular season game, not wait for a playoff game, but every day is what made Mark special. He was a big part of that identity, right? And a big part of that's why the, the team was so successful because they had that anchor in him. The Grizzlies, to this day, wouldn't be the Grizzlies without the contribution of Marcus Gasol. 
Live from downtown Memphis, this is The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon. CityMedia.com. It's Chris Vernon. Show. Welcome, 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 welcome. And the most special of all editions of the show today, it is a Tuesdays with Tony brought to you by ESCO, which is your pre- and post-game spot. Grizzlies are out of town until Friday. They'll have a home game on Friday. And then on Saturday night, they are going to have the Mark Gasol jersey retirement night. They're also going to be giving out these records to the first 5,000 fans Mark Gasol, Memphis made 33 don't play, Memphis to the bone. Super cool giveaway. And today and this week, Memphis made Mark Gasol is in town and joins us on this Tuesdays with Tony brought to you by Esco. Can you believe it? Look who's here. Look who's here. That's, that's man, the GOAT, man. Shit. He's the goat. here. <laughs> the goat is my dog. He's here. Man, is my dog. Welcome back to town. Thank you. So you guys came early. Obviously, the game is not until Saturday, yeah. but it sounds like you brought the whole family to Memphis. Yeah, we wanted to be here as long as we could. You know, the kids are off school, so it was good. And now the kids are seven and nine. Correct. So do you bounce them around town and show them? That now they have, I, I would imagine they see all the old stomping grounds, right? Are you kind of like doing the tour for them? This is where it all started? Uh, a bit like that. You know, yeah. just, just driving around the city, playing in the parks, you know, going to eat where we used to eat. Um, just show me a little bit. I want to go by the house, the old house. That you know, it's too emotional for me. I, right. I love that place. Really? Yeah, yeah, I can't do that. What did you have to do when you got here? Nothing. It's just the speed of Memphis. Just you know, gets with you real quick. It's just as soon as you land and you you know you get on that 240, like you're home. I'm you saying know. what you missed. The people, like seeing TA today. That that to me, that just you know, <laughs> that's all I wanted to do. Just see the people, enjoy. Um, Walk around, you know, nothing much. It's not nothing big. I mean, it's just being in Memphis. It is the people. Let me tell you guys a quick story. So I was telling you before we went on the air that I went to Orlando. And as much as the city gets beat up and there's always, you know, some kind of bad news about crime or something else like that, I always try to express the same way you just did. It's the people, right? So quick story. I went to Orlando over the weekend. That's why Rose filled in yesterday. And we left the airport on Friday. And now I get to our destination in Orlando, and we're going to be getting the uh, – I think my, one of my kids asked me for something. I went to go reach for my wallet. My wallet is gone. I don't have it. Now, obviously, I had it to get on the plane when we went through security in Memphis, whatever. Now, I'll keep the story short, but this is just to express – it's a perfect example of how much I love this city and why I love this city. The short version of the story is this. After I had gotten to Orlando, my, my, my wallet is gone. I have lost it somewhere. I go and I check Instagram, and I get a DM from a guy who I do not know who lives in Memphis, and he said, Chris, my name's Ron. You left your wallet at Chick-fil-A in the Memphis airport. And he goes, I turned it into security, but if you want me to overnight it to you so you can get back home, I will. And this guy took my wallet to FedEx after he got off work and overnighted it to me. You know, I, we do not know each other at all. But that's it. And I, and I try to express to people, like, it's the people, right? The good so far outweighs the bad. The idea for that sure, I could sure. lose my wallet at Chick-fil-A and there would just be a guy yeah. who's like, hey, man, I'll overnight that to you in Orlando. So the, and so sure enough... I got, the, I got the overnight package, and I was able to fly back yesterday because some guy randomly found my wallet at Chick-fil-A. 
yeah, what are the chances that's, that's of that? That's dope. That's dope. That was a miracle. Yeah, watch Amir. out for the DoorDash charges there now and then on your car. Because <laughs> 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 it is a little bad in that thing, man. Yeah. You understand? So you talked about experiencing the people. You talk about the people a lot and how much you love Memphis in that in, in the movie that just came out. Mm-hmm. We went, uh, I saw the premiere last Thursday. Have you watched it yet? Not yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm a little too self-conscious to watch those things. Like, I, I will. I will. I know, I know that Michael Blevin has done a great job. It's and great. I know it, I know it is, but, you know, it's... Um, it's hard for me to watch. It's hard for you to talk Anything about yourself, though, too, right? Yes. Yes. So this week is only <laughs> mostly about that, <laughs> which, which, is, which is great. But um, it's, it won't be only about me. That I can tell you. It how, won't be about me. How many times do you sit back and are you now to the stage where now you've been removed long enough that you can reminisce and think about everything that took place during your time in, in your career here? I definitely value it. I definitely value everything that happened and who it happened with. I, I'm, that means the world to me more than, you know, the end goal of what happened. And it's just who it happened with and, and how it happened. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what I take out the most and what I miss the most. You know, you know, seeing T.A. every day in the locker room and, and knowing what he's going to be about. That's what I miss. You know. So one of the things that I gathered from watching the documentary and, and, and covering you for all those years here You were always, and this has become commonplace now, whether it is with running teams or whether it is you hear teams all of the time talk about shot quality or how we're playing. But you were way far ahead of the curve on this being process-oriented, right? Doing, you were big on doing things the right way. And there's even a clip, I know you haven't seen it yet, there's a clip where you guys win a game. I believe it's in Brooklyn, and it's, it's Jaron's rookie year. And he has like 40 something points, and Mike has what? And you're mad. You're like, you were not winning games with a 40 point you know, performance by a rookie. Like, we have got to play the right way. Where I was most interested, where did that come from in terms of being so process oriented rather than results oriented? for your career? Um, I'm not entirely sure where it came from. I just know that's what I believed in and, and what I believe in today. So, wins can fool you sometimes. You win a game in Brooklyn, everybody's feeling good about themselves. You go back home and like, yeah, we won. That's, you know, long term, it's not going to work out. Like when you go into April, May, and you want to go deep in the, into the playoffs, those little things that you let sleep because you won and you don't look at yourself in the mirror, that's going to come back, back and bite you. There's no question about that. So sometimes wins and losses too. Sometimes lo- you lose a game, but you did everything you're supposed to. You play well. Don't beat yourself up. You know, you did everything you're supposed to. So, and I you guess, don't know where that came from. Mm, I guess. Is it what they teach there where you were coming up in development? No, not necessarily. But, you know, here, like at that time, we had the Spurs, right? Like the Spurs was the team um, as a franchise that was doing everything the right way, right, process. An example. And, the, and like, okay, I want to be, I, this is what, you know, this is how you win. And they were not the most talented team ever, always. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, they had a lot of talent. They had Tim Duncan, they had four, four I think, Hall of Famers. Um, but I'm like, okay, if we, if we want to win, you know, we looked around the locker room, like, okay, <laughs> that's, you know, we don't have KD, we don't have mm, other players like that. So, you know, we got to figure out how to do it together and, and believe in the process. And then when you – one of the things was – because I was trying to figure this out in terms of your development and, like, where you came up with – you know, the, why you were the way you were, right? And I, think, I know. <laughs> I mean, question. I think, I, but I do think that that's part of uh, – the documentary is trying to explore that as well. When, when you left high school, for everybody that watched you here at Lausanne, one of the things, Jay, is like American college basketball was never going to be my path. But then you went over there and truly became a different human and a different player. So if you can, just take me from leaving Lausanne and then deciding. Because your family was here. But you're going back home away almost like when a kid goes off to college. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're going back to Spain. It it wasn't easy. My mom really wanted me to stay here and go to college. Coach Calipari, you know, was recruiting me and making sure that my family knew that, you know, here I was going to be taken care of. Um, but I knew if I wanted to follow that path and be a basketball player, I had to, you know, start over and go back to Spain and, and kind of like wipe up the board and like, okay, what is everything I need to do to become a, a professional? How and did you know that though? Why did you not think that going feeling. to college like at 18 you don't know much? Yeah, you, right. just, you just have a feeling that <laughs> yeah. this is the right thing to do. And if you fail, it's your decision though. Like I'm, I wasn't. That's one thing that I, it always stuck with me. If I'm going to fail at something, 
I'm going to be responsible for that decision. Like, I'm, I'm not going to make someone else like, okay, you should do this. Okay, I'll follow you. Then it fails. That person is going to be gone. <laughs> and I'm going to be standing there with a, you know, with a bad feeling. So I'm like, I'm going to make that decision. And if I fail, it's my decision. And I can live with that. And, uh, but I'm going to give it the best shot. That I can also guarantee you. Did you immediately when you got, at, at, you know, because everybody's always searching for what's going to happen with my life after high school. It's one of those moments, right? When people go to college away, away from home for the first time, you don't really know the way it's all going to play out. Did you know immediately, okay, this is exactly what I wanted, and this is going to be my path, and I want to be a professional basketball player? Because you've always had a lot of interest outside of Basketball. Yeah, yeah well, I, I didn't know it was going to work out at all. Like, you know, it's a lot of small failures around, along the way that you have to react and pivot and like, okay, this is not working. Like, I need a little bit more of that. And uh, the first three years, like, first year I barely played. I played in like in the hustle. Like, it would be like the development team and the the, the professional team. So oh. I, I played like 16 and 16 games with each. I would practice every day. Like, the schedule was crazy. Like, we would practice in the morning with the professional team. Then. In the afternoon at four, you play, you practice with the with the B team. It's called, mm -hmm. and then you go back at seven and practice again. You know, or be available for the practice again with the professional team. So you're doing practice, <laughs> three practices a day, Damn. and you're just scrambling around town trying to get to one practice to another and eating and 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 living in an apartment with three other cats. So it's it's fun. And my dad made sure. My dad, uh, he said. Okay, so uh, back then the rules, like if you wanted to go back to college, you couldn't get paid. You only per diem. I said, okay, so my dad said, you're gonna sign a one year deal, you're not gonna get paid. Mm. I said, what? I said, Talk about sacrifice. So, so, so like, uh, uh, that, that's, that's how it's gonna go because it said, if you wanted to come back, if it doesn't work out and you wanna come back here and you're play, you're not gonna be able to college. You, you're not gonna be able to play. I'm like, oh, this, okay, 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 let's do it. Uh, so I did it. So after the first year, I signed my like three-year contract or four-year contract after that. So that was a bit different. But right away, my dad said, okay, you want to take this gamble? I'm going to take away your wallet. <laughs> once, once you were there for a year, did you know, all right, I don't want to go to college. This is what I want to yeah, do. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Along okay. the way, like, they, like we realized, like, okay, this, this might work out. And uh, like, they wanted to sign a long-term deal. And, um, and I was comfortable. But everything changes so fast and you have to, like I said, adapt to the new situation. Um, the coach that signed me left after the, you know, left after the, they signed me, he left. He takes off, fights with the GM and just takes off. So I'm, you know, new situation, I break my foot, I'm out for like a few months. I don't never get in the rhythm with the team, don't get to play much. Then the third year, new coach, he don't trust me, he want only veterans. I gotta change teams. I gotta, you know, like I said. You so have to politics move. go on overseas too? Always, everywhere. <laughs> you I can't didn't know that. <laughs> but, but I would have thought, like, all right, this is the project. We're gonna work on the project. Let's, yeah. let's form them into who we gonna be now. You yeah, know but saying? in Barcelona, like, it's a big team, right? Barcelona is a big team. A lot of, okay. like, Jabari Parker now playing there. Like, a yeah. lot of, like, NBA guys, Exxon played there last year. Um, so the project, like, Whew, they don't have that much patience in those big teams. Like right. if you go one, some of the smaller teams, you have, you have time to develop and they'll right. uh, invest the time in you. The big teams, sh you don't right. work out, you're out of there. Did you ever think that you were just going to – did you ever think I might just be a Spanish basketball player and I just may play professionally over here for my entire career? Yeah, I didn't think I was going to come to the NBA after I was done in my fifth year. Like I got drafted. I'm like, Shh, I, I'm, not, I'm not going over like uh, – you know, my, I got drafted by the Lakers. Right. They called me after the draft. I don't even pick up the phone. Like I'm like uh, 48. And, and a lot of and a lot is it of because of the money? Do that. The money is no, at that it, point. It didn't have nothing to do with the money. Like I was. Yeah. Why did you not go to the Lakers after you got drafted? They, they were a great team. I was not going to play. I just had been through that situation. A young player in a very good team. You're not going to play. And you have to develop. Playing time is important when you're trying to develop. So now I think that's why the Grizzlies now it's such a crucial time. You're trying to see what you have. Yeah. You are losing. Okay. It's development time. Let me see what I have. So playing time. That playing time mm. is pressure. You can. Like, when you're trying to win, you don't have that much time. And so you were, you never even considered it. Uh, not, not until, like, Chris Wallace came over. You're right. And, like, Powell is gone. Like, yep. now it's a di different team, different, you know, aspirations. So young, time, young guys I, that you can play with, so right? So now, now I have a chance to play. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm down. Once you could play. But you th did, was there a point where you thought, like, I may be like Juan Carlos, even though I know he came over here so for a back. year, 
or yeah, yeah, or or that like, hey, maybe I just want to play. Maybe I want to be a Spanish professional basketball player. <laughs> so, so I signed a three-year deal uh, here when I first came. Yeah, uh, and that was hard for Mr. Heisley to understand. Like, okay, this guy, you know, plays in Spain. Like, why am I going to pay this guy, you know, that much money for three years when he was 48th pick a year ago? Um, you know, what has to change? Um, so that was the back and forth with um, Chris Wallace and, and Mr. Heisley, you know, and. Uh, and his team, and it wasn't easy to understand. So Rest things changed. Eyes. Yeah, things changed uh, when in, in those discussions. But uh, I think three months. Into you haven't you haven't seen the movie, right? No, I have not. He he reveals that it, Chris reveals he had Pow call him. Oh, for real? Michael Heisley loved Pow, and he uh. said call Pow, and that Michael Heisley asked Pow, and your brother says I remember the conversation. He said, if I do this, is your brother going to be, you know, a real NBA player? And he was like, he will be better than me. Brotherly love. Yeah, really. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, Heisley always, you know, sometimes to a fault would get outside counsel. But he loved your brother. Yeah. He trusted, and trusted him. And so he said he called him. And then, of course, you know, you got Chris Wallace going, thank God. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> yeah, right? Just looking like thank a God Pal, Thank God Powell told him <laughs> that, right? Yeah, I don't think they, any of the three envisioned that this was going to be the, you know, how everything was going to play out. No, right. I mean, nobody. Nobody could have thought of that. Um, but, like, three or four months into the season, the first season, I'm like, this might not be for me. Like, all this losing and nobody caring. And, like, this is like, oh, like, I – I think it was November. Not fun. Not fun. <laughs> not fun. Not fun. Right. Not fun at all. You don't see, like, we we're talking about the process, right? You don't see a path. Okay, it's a long path. It's not a pretty path, but it's leading you somewhere. Things here were like, no, nah, it's just day to day. Like, okay, we lose against somebody by 40. It don't matter. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then Lionel came in, and that, you know, kind of sort of, you know, changed everything and gave us a direction and kind of put all of us in a place and give us, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. And uh, That's when you saw a real future. That's when I decided to stay. Like, I stay. That was like, okay, this, this makes sense. He spoke a language that, uh, that made sense to me. Why do you think Lionel connected with you so well? He was honest. He was honest. Like, whether you like Brutally it or not. Brutally honest. Yeah, he was, you would be honest. <laughs> and as a player, that's all you want most of the times. You don't want the politics. You don't no. want, you don't want tell you one thing in front and then go behind it. No, be honest with me. It might take me a day or two, you know, but then it'll, it'll make sense if you're honest. If, now, if you're not, you know, you cannot fool everybody all the time. Uh, it's it's going to catch up eventually. So when you, and you guys both were talking about meeting up with Lionel. Yeah. You know, even when you're in yeah. town, you're going to meet yeah. up with Lionel. So, yeah. like, that's a bond that is a, yeah. it's a lifetime bond it becomes. For sure. For sure. Lionel, Lionel always was like, like I always, he reminded me of my granddad. You know, you're going to say what was, what's come to his mind. You Like Mark say, either you're going to take it and bounce back from it and show and prove, or you're going to crumble. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you need to hear that as a player just to raise you to that next level, man. And he did a good job of that. So shout out Lionel Hollis. Yep. Man. Is that the first time that you thought this can be good here? Yeah. No, no, for sure. Like I, like I said, the first three months, I didn't know. I didn't know, and I, I didn't see, like I said, the trajectory and like, okay, this winning mentality and, and, and something that you're building. Right. Um, so when Lionel came in, like he just spoke a language that I, uh, that I believed in, that I trust, and uh, it, you know, he became like a coach that I could follow. Right. Uh, so uh, yeah, he was huge. What do you think drove you? I'm not your psychologist, but I, 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 wondered, <laughs> I wondered so much when I was watching it how much of it was to prove I am not this guy's little brother. Oh, for Pow? I still remember the song you made about Pow. That was you, right? That was your head. No, no. It's yeah. deleted. It's gone yeah, forever. I, I yeah, still remember, so... Mark. Mark, I was back in Spain. I was, I, was, I, was, I was about to make a couple of calls down in Fraser. I'm like, hey, go get this, Mark. Uh, I was young. I was in my 20s. Yeah, what do you whatever. Want? Whatever. Um, so, yeah. What drove How me? much of I it mean, was? for sure, yeah, probably it started, you know, it started a lot with Pow. Mm -hmm. You know, being a little brother and getting beat up and, and going, you know, to the house and having to deal with that, I hated that. And they, they know. They saw me in, on game days when we played, you know, Lakers or San Antonio and Pau was on the other team. Different. It was a different day. It was a different day for me. We, we weren't just playing um, some of the best teams in the NBA. We were playing Pau. And, and mm -hmm. I, it was no talking. It was definitely personal. It, yeah. I would even tell the referees, 
this has nothing to do with y'all. Stay out of this. <laughs> Stay <laughs> out of this. Like it's just me and him. <laughs> later on, he got he got a lot better. Later on, and um, and, and and it got easier too. Like, right. Once I start beating him regularly, and, and, and he like, <laughs> He's do you win? You get yeah. the record over your brother. Do you even know? No, I think no. He got me. <laughs> he did. Nah, okay, okay, okay. He got me. He got me. When uh, did you and Mike become super close? Because you guys went through that initial losing together. So I think about. Right. I, I already had a lot of information from that locker room. From pa not enough because they would tell me. I would listen to their stories. I would listen. You know, Power Juan Carlos, to my best friend. They, you know, sharing like right. who is who and who does what and who cares about what. So I knew a lot about Mike before I met him. So uh, once I got to the locker room and then I saw it from my own eyes. They and, spoke and highly of him. They spoke highly of him, yeah. About, about how good of a kid he was, how much he cared about the right things and blah, blah, blah. But I need to see it for myself. Like somebody can tell you something, but then you got to live through it, right? And then I saw it. And I think we became close. I think the pivotal point was when he almost got traded. I think that, that day, that's when he saw that oh, this, this dude's crazy. Mark, Mark is not... Um, doesn't care much about himself. Like he almost got, almost got traded the next day. Mr. Heisley and, and Chris Wallace called me and Yabaroni too. Like, you know, you blew the trade, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. They, they were pissed. And, uh, so for people that don't know, that at that time, it was Ramon Session to Joe Alexander, I believe was the deal. You think about it, it's crazy in retrospect, right? But Ramon Sessions to Joe Alexander, Joe Alexander had been of a lottery pick and they were going to swap those two, Ramon Sessions was on a heater for Mike Conley. And then there was an article in the paper that Ron Tillery had written, and you were like, basically, this is crazy. Cannot get rid of Mike Conley for this deal. What, I mean, like, and that's very uncommon, right? Yeah, for a I player to, uh, to come look, out. And looking say, back, looking yeah. back, I'm like, dude. It is kind of wild. It wouldn't have made sense. Yeah. But but looking but back, like, to, like for me to say that, like a player's talking like that, it, that 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 because yeah. he was happens. still a young player at because the time, and, the, and we hadn't accomplished anything. I'm a rookie too. So oh yeah, I was a rookie at that time. So they like they were you mad can't, at him. You can't do that. No. You can't. Do, but I had to. Like I felt like if we lose this kid, then definitely gone because mm. this makes no sense. Right. Um, but that's that's just how life goes. You have to make like I said at the beginning. You have to make your decisions and live with them. It's like when they drafted um, Hashim to beat. Hashim works out. I'm out of there. Bro, think, don't bring up his name on this podcast. Bro. Why not? It, it, but it's true. I, 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 I love Hashim. Like, he's a good dude. Tony whatever. said he tried to help him, and he wouldn't, like, stop eating hot dogs before games. Man, I'm talking about 40 on the clock. <laughs> Man, got a whole nacho plate on his head. What are you doing? That, that, that was, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was not his main problem, though. Well, yeah. Not his main oh, problem. Well, that was not. It, but you took that personal when oh, they used the number what? two. From day one, like we went to training camp. I'm sitting on the bus. <laughs> I, I'm sitting on the bus. We driving down. Remember that? We drove down for like four hours. Birmingham. And, I, and a man. And I'm, uh, I'm just waiting for the first practice. I'm like, yeah, Mark from, used to serve him in practice. Say, from the first practice, <laughs> barbecue. It, it don't matter. Offense, defense. I'm, I got to be. That's that's the way I was taught. Like uh, you gotta fight. You gotta fight for your spot, right? Uh, mm -hmm, you bring exactly. him in. There's you, just no way not to take that personal. You have to show me. But imagine that works out. There was no out. chance I, that was working out. Man. That, obviously, they drafted because they thought it could work out. To his credit, right. he was nice in college. I give him college. But when he got to the league, too much BET he was watching. There was too many music videos. <laughs> Too many nachos and hot dogs, man. That man, his work ethic just wasn't there, man. I'm saying, yeah. I sat next to him. I was around. Him. And then you look at Well, Mark, he's also got a guy pummeling that's what I'm him saying. And Mark every got a guy chance he gets. In, you got to. in the weight room, er, first one in the weight room, first one on the practice court, last one to leave. And you could just see it's a difference in who really wanted, man. And that's, and that's also, what I took a liking in him. I'm to like, that Yo. point, you were going to find out what he was made of, too. You have to. Quickly. You got to go mano a mano. Yeah. And, and just like. We all had to go through that. That's right. Like Xavier Henry, they drafted him, lottery pick. First thing, I, I, oh, I'm, I'm looking really at T. today, actually. I just look at <laughs> today. Am I lying, though? Man, man, man. So I look at T.A. first day. <laughs> I see his face. I'm like, oh, shit. Here we man, go. Man, come on, man. That's and that was it. So that's – when you get to the pros, there's pros there. That's right. And, and, and you know, and, and you want something that I have, you're going to have to take it from me. Right. So it's just simple as that. It's not going to be given to you. You have to prove yourself day in and day out. 
And there regarding the Conley thing, it, what's so crazy is, and I never even thought about this all that much, and they, they don't get into it, but the the irony of you going to bat for him and then you guys becoming what you became together and as a core four, the other guy was Kyle Lowry, yeah. who you ended up winning a title yeah. with. Yeah. Oh, all right. You just blew me with them. Yo. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they have to make a tough choice. Yo. They have to make a tough choice. I mean, because they drafted those guys back yeah. to back, and I'm sure Kyle always – Kyle was in your position. Shout out, Kyle. Right? Kyle. Which was, you're using a fourth draft pick on a point guard? I'm right here. Right. Right? right? And, of course, obviously you had to make a choice at that point, right? Yeah. He wasn't going to be happy no. being the, the backup. He wasn't going to work out. No. No for long. But – that's and then you guys ended up meeting back up together yeah, and yeah. becoming teammates in this crazy way, right? Because you did that. You guys had talent. You weren't any good as a team, but like twenty something wins or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like there was talent on that team between you and Rudy oh, and sure. Kyle and Mike and I mean. And OJ was on that team too. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You guys ended up. So at what point you said when when Lionel came? That's when you knew things were changing. Mm -hmm. At what point did you realize that the four guys together were something special? Do you have any idea? Yeah, in practice. Like, you once I saw how they approach practice and how they compete in practice, then I know I can trust you with the you know, big lights. And that's, that's it. Like, if, they, if they care about winning in practice, I don't have to worry about in the, in the games. Like, they're going to do the right thing in the games. It's about the eight other guys I got to worry about <laughs> being in place and understanding their role and doing, you know, playing at the same intensity that, you know, that it's necessary for us to win because we were not that good as, a, you know, right. talent wise, like we were good, but we were not that good to, to just out talent any team. So we have to outwork them. We have to, you know, take them down to the mud and, and, and wrestle with them. So that's what we did. We did what we had to do. How long did it take Zebo to convince you? You say that about practice. He, he came in hungry from day one. He came in hungry. They he say Zebo was not the practice player. He came in hungry. You in Birmingham, tell. he came in hungry. And it was a, kind of a something to prove, too, because he, they get moved in because they're taking Blake Griffin. So he always carried that, right? He, he came in hungry. And, and he, when we play live in practice, maybe he was not the best one and all drill guy or two on zero or I, like I agree. summer workout. I, I agree with that. He, he might not be that guy that he is going to be before drills. practice putting shots up. But when he get live in practice or competition, yeah. good luck. Yeah. Good luck. And, and, and that, you know, that's something to his talent. Like, he had that talent. That he, when he turned into competition, he would turn into a different animal. Did you have a perception of him? Well, Before he played against Powell a lot, so he I, I watched him a lot playing. It was really a basketball thing, though. Like, all the off-the-court stuff, all the stuff that, Who like, cares about that? went like, around his neck before he got here, it didn't. It no. didn't. I, I don't care about Because you guys what hit I it off about immediately. It, yeah, but because that – you show me who you are, you know, when, you know, when you're in the trenches and you – fight against another team, that's who you are to me. Mm -hmm. All the, if I can trust you then, I don't have to worry about anything else. I trust you for good, mm -hmm. 24 hours a day. And, and, and that's how it was for us. Like, when we trusted each other, and, and with TA and Mike on the court, we trusted each other everywhere. Yeah. Like, and and that's, that's something that's going to carry, you know, for, for the rest of our lives. How many times did you have to convince Lionel to put T.A. back in the game? Oh, he, would turn, he, I mean, he would check his ass. You know, what? He would just walk out. <laughs> I get the stretching over that back. <laughs> hey, I'm ready, man. What are you doing? Yeah, he would let everybody know he's ready. What are you doing, man? Come on, man. Uh, he, what was the game that everything kind of changed? Like, we were in Atlanta or something. No, no. He's in, I, I, I'm, he's in, he's, I'm going to get this. I got the mic now. Listen, we in L.A. And listen, I'm sitting down. You're going to remember this, too. I'm sitting down. Clapping, cheering for everybody. I ain't playing until the fourth quarter. Coach Hollins put me in. We down like eight or nine in the fourth quarter. Like, T.A., come on. I come here, I get like four, five steals. Mm -hmm. Change the trajectory of the game. Coach Hollins, we come and win. We probably win about like five or six. Come back in the locker room. Coach got the ball. He said, I want to get his ball to Tony Allen. You know, he ain't played in about 20 some games. <laughs> he could have been pouting. He could have been. You were. <laughs> no, I wasn't pouting. I mean, Mark would know when I'm upset. Mark no, would no, know when no, I'm hot. First year was crazy. Like, he was best attitude. Like, because he felt like he needed to teach OJ. Like, I just I'm, left the finals, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, why am I saying? We 9, 10 games behind 500. Why ain't playing? You see what I'm saying? But 
that specific game, he talking about coach came in and say T.A. could have been pounding. He could have been down. He could have been out of shape. He couldn't, you know what I'm saying? He could have yep. just said the hell with everything. I didn't. I came in and made a difference in the game. And after that, shit, we went on the road. Yep. We went on the road. You know what I'm talking about? And you're trying to win. Xavier so, had turned his ankle, uh, uh, t- uh, tore his knee up. Yeah, he had got hurt or something. And then, you know, but yeah. You know how that went with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like talking about that. Yeah, man. but you, you need but, guys that are going to help you yeah, winning. Yeah, come on, man. We're about and, winning. And, and that's who, what you're looking for, right? right. And T.A., just, it just fits perfectly to that. Like, he's going to take, take it to a different level. Why do you think that the bond became so great? between the four of you. I think our families Outside too. of I just think winning. Fa- families you know? too. Families yeah, bonded yeah, families together. Like our wives kicked. bonded, our kids bonded. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it was like a, like I said, a 24 hour thing. Like no matter what we were home on the road, like we were always, you know, connected in a way. Do you think about how special it was in reference to like other, other guys you played with or just watching the NBA now? And you think about like, this doesn't happen for everybody where you get four guys that spent that amount of time together. I mean, two guys can. Having four that had that many big games and how many, you know, days and nights and everybody kind of growing up and having getting married and having kids, like it's kind of odd. It's kind of crazy yeah. the way, you know, how rare it really is. It makes you value it more and cherish it. Yeah. Like, you know, and and we, I think we fought it till the end. Uh, kind of hold on to it and they're like, okay, you know, let's not break it up. Let's let's try to keep it going. But things happen and, and, and people change and, and, and you start to move on and, and nothing is forever, right? That, that's what makes us more, even more special uh, looking back now. So just, it was, it was just yeah. unique, unique. That it's certainly unique. What do you think about the most outside of the people? How, is there? <laughs> how imperfect we were. Um, Individually, <laughs> like how many flaws we had, like each one of us, like yeah, it still worked, and and not only worked, but it like he covered my back on things that I I, I I was not great at, and then I tried to cover his back on things that he was not great at, and the way same way with Zebo with Mike, like we cover for each other a lot, and and we care about it, like it wasn't just you know, it, we care to to a personal level that it's something nowadays um, how the world is, it's it's not that common. So mm-hmm. I think that, that makes me look back and uh, even savor it even more. How much do you think it matters to like each other as people? Like actually be friends? Do you I mean, think I, that I, makes a difference no, on yeah, the basketball but, but don't, court? Don't be fooled, though. Like, there were days that I wanted to slap the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he would drive most, me crazy. Most, no, not they, most, not but, most. <laughs> but there were days that like, all right, T.A., come on now. Yeah. Be, be, but that's just the way, that's what families are, right? Like that, you, 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 you go with the good right. days and the bad days. And then there were days that he wanted to slap the shit out of me because I would not talk to him or whatever. Like, all right. So it happens that way. But eventually you know that it's all love. And that we want the same thing, which is winning. Because we know winning takes care of everything else. If we win big, you know, he's going to be taken care of, his family, my family, all the family is going to be taken care of because winning matters a lot. Which, which win or series win do you value the most? Man, I have bad memories. Is there one that is more special than the others? I remember, I, see, I remember plays and matchups and schemes and, and like specific things more than series. Like, because to right, me, it's the, right. it's the, the addition of many plays that led you to win the game, right? Or series. So there's no one that I could tell you because it was just so many of them, of a small plays that led us to, to like, to this bond that we all have, that I can't tell you specific series that I did. Okay, now this is what I can trust these guys. It, it didn't happen then. I told you it happened in practice. Is there one that hurts more? A few, a few. But I have selected memory, and I and I kind of like try not to remember that. <laughs> right. There's like you know who was it was like a, a couple weeks ago when Zebo was in here with us when it, uh, he said the one he got suspended. Yeah, the one. He gets yeah, with, with forever. With Adams. He will forever. Adams. Like it haunts him. I don't blame it. It hurt all of us, but you move on. Like yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sucked. You know, we, we would go back. We, like, at the same time, what are he doing in the game? The game is over with. Why is he still in the game? Mm-hmm. And I'm sure he hunts him, hunts me, hunts TA, hunts the coach that, you know, uh, I think it was Dave at the time. Yeah. Um, that had him in the game when it was impossible. Steven Adam was blocking every shot and dunking every ball. And like, he looked like, I'm like, who is this guy? Um, but the game was over. So we already think about the next game. We're going back to OKC. Right. We have to gear it up and, like, look at film and see what we need to do to beat them. But now without Zebo, mm-hmm. And that's, 
that's a big difference. Uh, yeah. It's he's a horse. And your team was great that year. No, yeah, great. Meanwhile, I want to ask. Let me see. Pause the, the matchup coverage because you played in two two um, errors almost like to the point where when we did pick and roll, we'd be on the same page. And I tell you, I'd be like, yo, yeah. hey, bro, be up on this pick and roll for about three, four seconds. I'm getting over this pick. You get back to your man. Yeah. If you don't do that, I don't even want to shake your hand. <laughs> yeah, I know. Trust me. <laughs> me ain't showing on that pick and roll. I don't want to shake your yeah, hand. Yeah, I'm, talk I'm and, not talking and to you. And then to make that adjustment, to, I was probably out the league by then, but y'all, the league had went to just – Automatic sag. Drop right away. Take away the, the roller. Yeah. And at some point, like, it's like, yo, you just, you just like taking the night off. Or, like, what was that feeling like as a big going uh, to that like, transition? I hated giving up plays. I hated giving up, like, certain shots. But the league got so talented that you have to take, you know, not only take something away, which you're willing to live by. Like, well, okay. I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, if they start making the floaters and pull ups, so be just, so so just be it. So so they beat us with you know twos. of the dribble twos, right? right. So you want to take away the threes, you want to take the rotation and all those things. So and that's what that was about. Cause I I watch basketball now, and I was like, damn, I see somebody get the cooking in that mid range. I see them like, okay, we not finna tag. We gonna we just gonna stay with the with the guard, and we just gonna let him work. Yep. And it's like the, the guard get caught in the pick all the time. So it's like, damn, yeah, they, I, I, I didn't him. never understand. You just broke that down. That was dope. I always wanted to know that, man. That's why, like, Luca, Luca has so much, like, with his size and, and your biggest going to be in a drop, like, you create so much separation. The other guy that can do anything, you six, what, six, 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 seven? Yeah, he a problem. Yeah, man. And another question, how you feel about the European – the European guys is damn it taking over the NBA now. <laughs> I know you probably saw it, hey, but our top five guys in the Giannis, league. Giannis, <laughs> uh, Jokic, Embiid, Jokic, Jokic. Come like, on, man. At any list for the Shea top Gillis, five. Alexander. That's unprecedented. I, I, I didn't even see that coming. How did the game Who, speed up? No, like every, that? Everybody. Like, all these guys. And, did and you? Wemba Yama now? Like, you, yeah. seven, four, like what, what Did you see doing? the Jokic thing coming? No, no. I, I kudos to to Denver for believing that that you know playing like that through him um, every play and, and and creating a system and having all those group of guys that complement the way he plays uh, would would take him them far that far. Like, I kind of thought he probably got his game from you, big fella. Cause I ain't gonna lie, you 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 sound like <laughs> no for real, no no for real. Cause I ain't gonna lie, like I've been seeing that. Like his game really didn't never like. It still don't stick out to me, and, I, and there's no knock to him. But it's like I've been seeing big fella, you know, behind the back throw that thing to me on the cut. You know what I'm saying? Step back up, uh, uh, left hand late. You know what I'm saying? Getting his teammates involved. Yeah, Hell, they, half of my points came from him. He is. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, but he, I saw dangerous. a sign of that from you. He's doing it for 40 minutes. Like they playing through him every play. Yeah, he's oh, talented. Yeah. Very talented. Man, man, I, I, I like him. And and I, what? So Jordy Fernandez, the assistant coach. Uh, for SAC now, he used to be the assistant coach for um, the Nuggets. And I tell him, like, keep playing through him. All you need him to do is play a little more smart defense. Like, he, I, I want to see him, like, okay, now he has all the offense, a little more defensively, a little more just hands. Like, you don't have to, like, go all out, no, but no. care a little more. Like, yeah. don't, don't be a target, right? Like, exactly. he used to be a target in some series early on. And Obviously, these are extremely talented guys. There's also a lot that is brought up about – the training that takes place over there. And you were talking about the practice mm. schedule earlier. Mm. You know, I heard somebody, uh, it was a coach the other day, was complaining. He said, look, it's not, it, it's only going to continue unless we change the way we do things. They have six practices in one game. We have six games in one practice. So the yeah. And this is why the development of these guys from overseas is so much greater than what is happening in American basketball. That was his opinion, whether that is true or not. But you are somebody who went through both. Did you ever play AAU? I did play AAU. Andre Allen. You with did. Andre Allen. I played, you did? I played, yeah, I played, I played AAU with Andre Allen. We went to a couple so tournaments so with the Nike team. So yeah. you know the AA, you know what AAU yeah. was like. Obviously, you played high school basketball at Los Angeles. You, you did both, you, you know, right, where you played in America, but you also then mm -hmm. trained before you came to the NBA in Spain. But in, the, the main goal in AAU, what it is, is to get picked in the games, right? Like to, to shine in the games. That's, yep. that's the... <laughs> That's anybody's because if I if I'm the best in the game, I'm gonna get picked by whatever college and mm -hmm. so on. Over there, it's not like that. 
Like, you can be the best player, but if you don't do the little things and you don't play the right way, like, they, we, you don't have that many players. So it's going to be... It's just the culture. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's way more yeah. simpler. And, and the highlight is not the game. Uh, you know, if you don't practice the way you're supposed to, I don't care what your name is, I don't care, you know, your hype, your rank, anything, you're not going to play. Really? And that's... that's, that's and that is true across the board. There's not somebody there. You know how, like, like now, you could just find you, you guys could, like, if, like, uh, let's say somebody doesn't take to your son and doesn't like him, right? We'll just go find another AAU team and he'll play right, he 40 minutes right a game. Over. There is nowhere to run, right, if you're there and just say, hey, I'm going to switch teams and then this guy doesn't like me. Okay, yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't understand how talented I am. Rehearsal is more important than the actual performance, right? How you rehearse as a, as a band, uh, let's say music, like how you re rehearse like, is more important than how you're going to perform on, on the weekend. So if you rehearse well and you do what you're supposed to, then I can, you know, the, they will reward you on the, on the weekend. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I was just watching that, uh, that Patriots documentary on, when I was on the flight uh, that they're running on Apple TV, Dynasty, whatever. And, like, when you walk in their facility, Bill Belichick had this huge sign, and it said, every battle is won before it is fought. It's from like the art of war. It's like some Sun Tzu, and it it made it, it, you saying that immediately made me think of that big quote that was in you their know locker the movie room. The Whiplash, the movie Whiplash. Yep, that's my favorite movie. It is. Yeah, yeah. And it can tell you a Dude's lot about. It's really hardcore, though. Yeah, that's that's how <laughs> that, that guy is hardcore. That's how. I, but it wasn't personal. That's right. It wasn't personal. Then when he see him outside of that, he's a normal guy, and but the kid is traumatized, <laughs> and maybe rightfully so. <laughs> but he wasn't made for it. It wasn't made for it. This is why you loved Lionel. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I, I do love Lionel. Yeah. But you also, you yeah, would yeah. you would roll your eyes at softer guys. Yeah, I mean, right. Like I say, Lionel Lionel wanted he was he wanted that confrontation, but it wasn't like I want to fight you. It was more so I want to raise your play, and it's gonna help all of us. And that's one of the things I loved about him. And he also was a was a life man too. He wanted to preach life into you. You know what I mean? He, I skipped the X and O stuff. He wanted to teach you how to be a young man. Mm -hmm. He oppressed that a lot too. So he still do it to the day. Always sending me a scripture, some about life. You know what I'm saying? He carried that on all the way. So big shout out to Lionel, man. Consistent. Yeah. And he also would burn you to the core to make you mad so that you would. Yeah, be I able always. To oh, Mark, I don't know if you remember that day. Uh, you, you got to remember this. We and the game winning shot was on me, obviously. Chris Paul hit the game winner. We down 0 2, yeah. leaving LA. We got in the first practice. Lionel Costa, man, oh man, he cursed us out so bad. He told me, uh, what he tell me? He said, TA, hell, they not even guard you. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> he looked at Mark. He said, Mark, I need you to get your ass down in the block. I don't know who the hell told you, you was off Vita Sabonis. <laughs> he told Zebo, hey, Zebo. Can you get a rebound that actually counts and stop stealing them from Mike Conley? <laughs> oh, he went down the line. Like, down and, the line. And, down told, the and told Mike, he said, Mike, you know what Chris Paul see when he sees you? We're going to X that out. We can't say that for the camera. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, say that, please, but that's what he feel like when he see you, my boy. And before you know it, we all looked at each other like we had just – and we, and we blew the blue squad out that day, too, just, <laughs> just to make it clear. I think we won every scrimmage. And, man, we went on to win four games. And that's that response I was talking about. Like, he want to he wanna fire you up to get you to have that carryover on the court, man. And uh, I'm pretty sure you remember that series, yeah. man. And honestly, like, what I said, like he's, he was honest. And he was going to the main guys. He wasn't yelling at the fifth, sixth guy. He was going at the main guys. And, and the other one just going to follow suit. It's just, it's just how it works. Also making you mad. I broke the story on, uh, on Twitter, actually, that you were going to win Defensive Player of the Year. And I knew because one afternoon I was about to go on the air, my phone rings, and it's Tony. And you guys are in the middle of the playoffs. And I'm like, what in the world? He was mad. He said, he said, he, was mad. he said, Chris. Oh, he and I said, mad. yeah. And he said, this month... Hadn't talked to me in two weeks. <laughs> and we get off the plane. He said, Tony Allen, I need to talk to you. Tony Allen, I need to talk to you. He uh, said, we get off the plane. He said, he come up, put his arm around me. And he said, I just wanted to be the first to tell you. Mark Gasol won defensive player of the year. <laughs> yeah, he was so hot. And he said, this mom 
and I said, I, I, oh, I, hey, dude, I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm like, Tony, I'm like, are out. you saying, are you saying Mark uh, won defensive player of the year? He's like, yeah, man, he just told me, whatever. I go straight out of Twitter, I'm like, report, <laughs> Mark is always going to be named defense. I said, Tony, that is news. And he's like, I don't give a f- <laughs> <laughs> I think, <laughs> no, but we we were not on the plane. We were we were practicing we were at practice. UCLA. We were okay. And I see him storming from the back of the bus, just takes off. Oh, the off. bus. That's right. And he was so mad and like, man, and like, what are you talking about? Like, I, obviously, you didn't even care. I didn't even know. No, he did. I didn't really did care. I, I didn't. Did care. I, no, I, not I care. Like, I didn't know that that was an award. Like, Mark, I, it makes it even worse that you didn't even care about the award, and it's the only thing in the world he cared about. And uh, he know that. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Know, it's, I know crazy, that. it's crazy. It's crazy because it's crazy because like, yo, it all made sense. Cause when he won his ring, you know, and I saw what he put on the ring, he put the grit and grind on the mm-hmm. ring. Yep. I say it come back full circle, man. I'm telling you, I was smiling from it. I think a tear probably came out my eye. But man, when you did that, bro, I ain't gonna lie, that was gangster. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, that was gangster. Cause hey. I was like, yeah. all right. And then it's like he said, I think you told me when you came to my crib, when you know, brown right yep. back. He said, I got the ring now. You want the defensive player? <laughs> 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 but, buddy, buddy, or no? Yeah. He said, oh. it to you. That was funny, man. But yeah, man. I mean, it was an award, man. I, I was feeling like a guard hadn't won it in so long, and I was chasing it. Uh-huh. I was chasing it. I was chasing it. And uh, But to his credit, I, I, I helped a lot that year. I was on the That's defensive right. end. I was tagging Bruh. and digging like, and, you know, helping out. You know, so either way it went, it was all up. We were the best team defensively in the league. No I, I don't believe, like, defensive player of the year. Like, how, how you measure that without putting the team in it? Like, mm-hmm. I understand it. You, you know, everything about marketing and, and, you know, it's something that you can chase. And, and But it's more about team. It's a team sport. For yeah, sure. It's always For a sure. team sport. And so I understand why and, and everything. But Is there an individual accomplishment you're most proud of? No, See, you don't. Him. You really that's don't him, care. Dog. No, I'm trying that's to think. Him. I'm like He's so selfless, no. bro. No. Look at him. He don't. The All Star Game. The All Star Game was cool. It's just like a validation. Like, okay, she, uh, let me see what she's seeing today. And getting to do it against your brother. I mean, that that's was for, that was the second one though. But that's for that's not how. Yeah, I, I like the first one especially because you're nervous again about playing the game of basketball. You had seen there with you know Steve Nash, Kobe Bryant, Tim right. Duncan, Dirk Nowitzki. Like, you grew up watching those guys, and all of a sudden you're in the locker room with them. That's that's cool. That's like okay. Let me see how they move. Let me see how they how they operate. How they talk. How they approach the game. I went in there trying to. I'm trying to win these games too. I, uh, <laughs> you yeah. didn't know any better. No, I just like because if I take it down, I'm gonna lose. I'm not that talented. That I can just cruise on games and right. trying to win like no playing defense or not talking right. or not. You used I, to have I, ass I, pretty I much. I, you can't win. How much do you watch now? Whew, quite a lot, um, but. You know, watch European basketball, NBA basketball, college basketball, obviously now. Um, I, I like to watch basketball just because you can pick some of the things and, and see things that you can apply um, at different levels. So it's I like watching basketball. What's a, a day in the life like now? What uh, does Mark Gasol do on an average day? So um, it turns around my kids now more than anything. Like, you know, it's like their schedule, and, and then I'll just build mine off, off of them. Um, I have to go up to Girona where we have the team there in the club and, and, and we're growing and how far it, is that about an hour and 50 minutes from from my house so explain to people right for, for that don't know just kind of how the basketball uh, ecosystem works there and then your involvement ACB is supposed to be the second best league outside the NBA right okay. the NBA is the first the best home league then it's ACB Spanish league um, is the supposed to be the second so we built uh, founded a team back in 2014 but only with kids at first. So like only the foundation, only the roots, only kids from years uh, 13 to 18. Okay. Fast forward to 2017, I've made the first senior team. We started in fourth division. We kept growing, growing. And then once I you know, I decided to uh, let go of my NBA career, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go back. My team was in the second division by then. I'm going to play for my team, bring them up, try to bring them up, obviously, to the first division, bring up the ticket sales, um, learn a lot of things of how things are working here, and try to make it to the ACB. And we did that. So are you the owner? Uh, 100%, yeah. Mm. You are you are the sole 100% owner. owner of this team. Yeah. And so this now consumes you. 
making this. It, it, I mean, it, outside it, of family it, life, it takes away the free time, but yes. and and and, and uh, stuff like that. But it, you learn so much. Like you learn from the front office aspect of it. You learn from the coaches how coaches react. You obviously have the the players' perspective. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to create something or adapt something that worked so well here in the NBA and everything that you learn along your journey mm -hmm. and from culturally, the national team culturally, yeah, yeah and, and trying to bring it because one thing, a lot of things are done here are much better than done in, 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 uh, in overseas. Like the individual work that we put in here, it's, it's skill unparalleled. work. Yeah. Right. But then it's how you translate that into the team success. That's where we miss it, right? Like the priority is like, okay, if we, if we're going to work out one on zero for two hours, but then I'll give you the context that or the goal, why you're doing it, and explain to you how this is going to translate into the games. I'm not doing you a favor. So I see a lot of guys that you know spend so much time into dribbling. You're not going to have the ball in your hands most of the game. So obviously you need to work on your dribble. It's just the, finding that that percentage, finding that balance. Um, so. Yeah, that's that's what the things that I like to do. And in terms of team building and figuring that how out, like you know how to how to what what kind of players you want, and does your roster change out? Is it an every year your roster is a new roster? Uh, definitely, the coaches uh, have been changing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> are that, you in, are you impatient or no? No, it's just it's just a, a, a way. You just got to find a, the fit, a, a, the standards that that you know that you like to see, and and how you they react to certain things. Um, you know, it's it's always important to me. I only have five things on offense, five things on defense that I give him is a structure. From that, you paint the house how you want, put the mm. whatever you want on the inside. Decoration is your choice, yep. but this is the foundation and, and the wall. So if you stay within that, I'm, I'm cool with it. Do you find that you now watch basketball through the prism of scouting players? Uh, all of it. You all do. Of, all of like it. when you're watching, though, are you thinking like, hey, this guy, like, well, you know I what I mean? From watching so much basketball and playing for games, you're always going to have that, like tendencies. And But now you look more at the mindset of the players. Like, at, the, at least for me, like everybody has talent. Is what's your mindset that is going to separate you and going to make a difference, really? And, and that's the feel what we're trying to do. So you cannot jeopardize and, 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 and take shortcuts in that. Like, you cannot oversee, like, well, he don't have a good attitude, but he's very talented. Well, that, I think that's short, short term. I think about big three. Hell, I need to be signing up over there, huh? <laughs> would you sign Tony to play for your team? Right now. You right will? now. Right you, now. You would sign right now. The check might not make him happy, though. Hey, you weren't here last weekend, right? Like, uh, he did a he did a starry thing, the jumper. Mark. How did it go? Bro, the wind was blowing. <laughs> what happened? But you know, you always you tell swing, me I'm a swing, swing, swing guy. I'm not swing, the, swing, <laughs> swing again. I'm not the swing, swing. I'm the swing guy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, boy, in boy. this instance, I was a swing guy. I should have been. Uh, but hell, uh, Rudy, he he only made ten. I mean, no, he made nine. Rudy yeah. was here too. Yeah, yeah. Mario Chalmers was there. Mario Chalmers made uh, ten. The wind was blowing. What, and, and what was, was, the, game? What was the game, though? What was the game? We had shoot we three pointers. Three point line. And Starry, you know, Scoot in a little bit, killer. Just yeah, I, I should have shot it. <laughs> I, I start, you know. going through your own and, career. And listen, and listen it's bit. crazy because I was surprised I even hit that six. You know, I tried. I don't shoot like this no more. <laughs> you, you form shooting now? I'm now form okay. shooting now. So I'm, I'm a little right here in the front now. And it still didn't pan out. But damn. Them jump shots. One, hey. thing, one thing about him. <laughs> do you, hey, do you think those he, everybody always does the, like, different eras thing, yeah. right? And they're like, well, could the 90s Bulls play against these teams, whatever? Do you think your team with the oh, way – there it is right there. there. Look at this, Mark. Okay. This is broke. Oh, no, look, this look. is broke. Uh, maybe, maybe he <laughs> so he, he needed jumping. to jump. He, 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 he can't. He don't have his lift. Like, he, he, he needs to jump bad real knee, high. Bad and on the way down, he shoots. Hey, see, and, that, and I didn't know that when I was playing. See, if I'd have knew that when I was playing, I'm telling you, I'd have shot a little better. You this, know, that's cash. This poor D. Oh, this, look, that one looked good, though. Who the hell was recording all these misses? Oh, there you go. But that's my new form now, uh, Mark. It's funny you noticed that. Like I'm, so I, you flat-footed now? I'm flat-footed now. <laughs> and, and, but when I used to play, you're right, I used to jump as high as I can and shoot it on and, the way and down. And then make up your mind about and it. And I'm just now learning. I didn't have to do that when I was playing. With the way it's all spaced out now, do you think those teams could win now? Us? With you and Zach and Tony and Mike, like, is it just a team of a bygone era where now – Everybody well, has we, to be able to shoot threes and you're spacing true, it out. Mm -hmm. True that, true that. That is one of the factors that affect him. But my whole thing is I would get irritated. 
you know, just the touchy, the, the touch fouls. You can't hand, you can't put the arm bar, and just to see Mark all the way in the drop. <laughs> oh man, I probably won't talk to him until the exit yeah. meeting. You, you get Booker coming up a screen and just <laughs> raised, and he's behind, like oh, hitting like wh whoever big, like Nurkic, and like he would be mad. Like I would not I, be. I, 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 I don't I would think not. I could. That's yeah. what I say. I tell yeah. everybody. I say I don't think I could play in this league. And I think uh, Coach Sil I'm gonna say Coach Silver, Adam Silver, is gonna probably put a little more physicality back into the game. And start letting them bigs get back down. He's starting post. to let two posts all star break. Yeah. You can tell they're calling. They're letting more stuff go. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just the obviously the numbers now mean so much. Uh, yeah. To, uh, and to make decisions and now, and back then it was a bit different. It's How much do you keep up with the Grizzly seasons? Um, quite a lot. Quite you a do? lot. Yeah. I mean, last couple of weeks I've been on the move a lot, so I haven't. Well, this season you're, you're forgiven yeah, but, if you but, uh, <laughs> if you're not watching it now. But, you, but you've been through these kind of seasons too, where a, a season gets wrecked by injuries, and it's yeah. like, okay, reset. We'll be back to being good. When the team was healthy and everybody was playing, they look good. Yeah. They look good. They look like Amazing. on a mission. They look on a mission. They had. Ja is a you know guy that everybody wants to you know. That's right follow and, and is able to do so and uh, everybody played their part perfectly and it look, they look really good so I guess the, the last remaining connection is Jaron yeah he was right he was, like that's the last connection uh, to yeah, you, you and him because he was a was rookie he, how old, he was like 18 or 19 when he that's first right. came in yeah 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 no he's, did you think he was going to be an outstanding player in this league he could uh, he was different he was different he, you could see the change of like how players are and uh and how talented they are. He, he could drive, he could shoot threes, he could block shots. Um, I mean, it's now, you know, how you put everything together as a team. And, exactly. and, and, and when everything was together, they look pretty good. So I'm, I'm, you know, I can't wait for next year and see them and watch them play and, uh, and, and root for them. It's going to be Saturday night. Memphis, uh, Memphis made Marc Gasol. 33 don't play now. They made this look like. The Project Pat cover. Mr. Don't Play. Because you loved Project Pat. <laughs> that was my, 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 my two uh, teammates uh, from Fraser. Like, they, they the one to put me into Project Pat. And they say in the dark it helped you learn oh, English. Oh, they were there. They were, yeah, well, it helped not, you learn not great English. One, but not <laughs> great English, but yeah. Like, we spent, <laughs> we spent so much time together, man. That, those mm. days were the best. We, we knew a window from the, from the little high school uh, gym that was broken, so we could break in at night and, and play, and that's all we did. Like, honestly, like every day we would try and just go around the city trying to find games and play basketball. Why do you think it was such a love affair with you and the city? I think the city don't judge, you know, past or like they just care about you and, and what you're willing to do, you know, and, and every day. And, and I think that went away uh, along the way with everyone that stepped into Memphis. Like, they just judge you for today. Mm. They don't care about your past. They don't care about it's like how you're going to, you know, who you're going to be today. And, uh, and, uh, and that just fed perfectly with me because, you know, always like, oh, you Powell's brother or you, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to be this or you're going to be that here. Like, hey, I like what you did today. Like, more of that. And, uh, and, you know, it was just, it worked out perfectly. You felt like there wasn't, it was not judgmental. I have also a selective hearing. Like, I, I hear what I, what I want to hear and I feel, you know, and connect with the people that I want to connect with um, because there's a feeling and, uh, and, and that feeling here was, you know, like that. They didn't care about what other people thought of them either. Like, the, Memphis doesn't care what LA people think about Memphis. Like, we don't care. Like, we're not going to care now. We haven't cared the last 30 years. You don't care about us, so don't judge. Uh, so. I think that just you know uh, resonated with who I who I am and uh, and it stuck with me. Obviously, Zach's is up there uh, in the rafters right now. We had that night. Have you thought about what this is going to feel like having 33 retired in FedEx Forum? I think it's the kind of uh, event that uh, that you can imagine, but until you you know you walk that walk, like it's, right. it's, you you right. don't really know what it's going to feel like. The anticipa anticipation is crazy, like. I have a lot of emotions balled up, um, but I think it's just going to be, you know, a very unique feeling that uh, that not many people can say. And to be up there with those cats, with, with Zebo, with TA and Mike, so to be. eventually, eventually, <laughs> yeah. eventually, like I can't wait to come back. And <laughs> there was a be, bit of a delay. Slow <laughs> 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 down, boy. That boy, slow down. Boy. Uh, he oh, it's coming though. It's coming. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. It's we got you on the right track. I We're good. Yeah. We're good. I'm, I'm
very happy and fortunate to, to be able to be, it's going to be the four of us up there and rightfully so. Uh, so um, that's, you know, that's all I care about. And is it a little annoying for you guys that Mike is still awesome? No, he yeah. is like essential it, it, it for the Timberwolves. Me. He is playing great. It man. don't surprise me, man. He, uh, he's been Unbelievable. Those, Mike always been one of those cats. He, he took care of his body. You know what I mean? Yeah. He plays the right way. He always could shoot. And he always had good camaraderie skills to bring everybody together, man. He know how to talk to people. He know how to yeah. talk to everybody. And he, he just fits right in to any situation. So I'm not surprised at what he's doing right now. He just signed another deal. So big shout out to Mike, man. Yeah. He keep going. He probably got about two more years after that. On the Udonis Haslam side after that, but you know, <laughs> but he just that kind of he got that character to where you want him in the locker room at all costs. Yeah, yeah. in any crowd, Mike will you know race, and, and you put him in a good team, he's going to make a great team. And if if the team is great, he's going to make it even better. So, uh, Mike, you know, I'm very happy for him. I think you know a lot of things that you see, uh, you can live through him and, and watch him, and and then you know you understand uh, how he helps the team win, and, and I love that. Last thing before we get out of here, because I know you got to run. In the documentary, they cover this, and then obviously I know when you're in town, you're going to be in town for a week. The work you did and how special these hospitals are to you yeah. that are in this city, right? And there's a lot of clips and a lot of the relationships that you built there. And obviously your family had a very strong yep. uh, connection with St. Jude almost immediately when when your parents moved yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, that's that were there. You know, they feel... Uh, my, my, my parents, both my parents were in the medical medical world. Uh, I was not a doctor. Uh, right. Uh, and, and my way of helping patients was that and not patients and their families and what they were going through. Um, it was very dear to me. And, and, and I think they helped me more than I helped them. They gave me more strength um, to overcome any challenge that we faced. Uh, obviously, it's first world problems, right? When you lose a game or you not perform or, you know, whatever injuries uh, that you're going to recover from, when you go and, uh, and deal with them, you see a different perspective in life and, and you see a different type of fight. Um, unfortunately, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the, the stories and people that I met and, and kids that I met didn't make it. And, and, and that, that changes everything uh, on how you, you know, perceive life. Um, and thankful for, to have Hospitals like Le Bonheur and St. Jude that will, you know, go above and beyond for, for those families and kids. Uh, so now that I have kids, uh, you know, if anything were to happen to me, I, I know where to go. Yeah. He is Mark Gasol. If you see him bouncing around town this week, say hey to him. Give him a high sure. five and congratulate him on his uh, number going up in the rafters. First 5,000 are going to get this record on Saturday night. Very well may be an Embiid sighting, too. Because yeah. they're saying he's coming back this week. So oh, maybe really? – uh, and we may have to go ahead and throw you in a uniform on a 10-day. Yeah, you want to play on Saturday? No. 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 You look good, no. man. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. I can. I can. You can't get us a bucket, a rebound? I can no. get you a stop, maybe a, a stop. five uh, fouls, <laughs> a lot of claps, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of yelling the schemes. That's how I feel, That's about bro. it. It's going to be retirement night on uh, – the Jersey retirement night on Saturday night – at FedEx Forum for the Grizzlies versus Sixers. Man, thank you so much for coming in. We love pleasure, seeing man. you here, and this is going to be the best. I can't wait for Saturday night. It's certainly going to be one of the most special nights of the year uh, by wide march. And, and enjoy enjoy the week. We will. We'll, we'll, we'll. Back home for you. See, I know uh, wife and them going to get up with I each know. other. We're we going to bump heads. We'll let Mark sure. bounce, and we'll be back after this. Chris Martin, show. This is an actual good shoe. Yeah, it looks like, like this a good is a shoe. real good shoe. What okay. you think about them, uh, KJ? She <laughs> likes Cheetos. <laughs> like Cheetos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Cheetos? You like Cheetos? For kids, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. For kids, for one kids, thousand yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, if I was still playing basketball, I like I played in brightly colored shoes. I, I wore pink shoes a lot of the yeah. time or purple shoes. Like I like that. The Sneak Fest Show live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. There's only one team you want to watch, and Bally Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Bally Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, 
Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Elevate your hotel experience in the heart of downtown Memphis at the Westin Memphis Beale Street. Our AAA Four Diamond Hotel boasts spacious guest rooms and suites, refreshed meeting space, upscale dining, and more. Just steps away from the sights and sounds of Beale Street, FedEx Forum, and the Memphis Rock and Soul Museum. After a full day of work or play, retreat to your hotel room or suite featuring luxury bedding, a contemporary bathroom, a spacious workstation, complimentary coffee, and a flat screen TV. During downtime, you can take advantage of perks such as our on site fitness center. 24-hour business center and upscale dining at Penny's Nitty Gritty. On your next visit to downtown Memphis, make the Westin Memphis Beale Street Hotel your home away from home. We were without internet from 11 in the morning until what ended up being around 8 o'clock at night. I'd be the first to go in an apocalypse. I just would not even know what to do. Chris is over here like, who needs internet anyway? Let's just be one with the land. And I'm like frantic. I'm like, I can't do anything. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're recruiting the best talent to help us develop the sustainable steel needed for today and tomorrow. Join us at the edge of the future. Visit www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. That's www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. There's no substitute for experience, the knowledge gained from having been there before, and the passion to share what you know to make everyone around you better. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by January 12th, and you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account and be entered into our Grizzmas drawing. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Hey Grizzlies fans, after exciting hoops and a lucky night of gaming, where do you rest your head? Look no further than Southland Casino Hotel, proud sponsor of the Memphis Grizzlies. Our high-rise hotel is the epitome of luxury and comfort. Picture this, you've just finished an evening of gaming and dining, so you head on over to one of our 300 rooms to end the night. Choose from standard suite and presidential suite, plus we're pet friendly and offer mobility scooters for rent. It's a seamless experience for everyone. And don't miss the Main Street Exchange, right in the heart of our casino lobby. Whether you're craving a snack or need a souvenir of your stay, we've got you covered. From polo shirts to shot glasses, take a piece of the Southland excitement home with you. So come stay and play at Southland Casino Hotel, where every moment is designed for your enjoyment. Book your hotel stay by calling 833-703-3350 or visit online at southlandcasinohotel.com slash hotel. Guests must be 21 years of age or older to check in at hotel. Must be 21 plus, play responsibly. For help quitting, call 800-522-4700. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, yeah. back to your host, Chris hey. Vernon. At the jungle, man, we at the mud. Play. Keep it moving, man, we on the run. Hey, Benny struggle, but we ain't done. Yeah, Benny struggle, but we overcome. Hey, at the jungle, man, we at the mud. Play. Keep it moving, man, we on the run. Hey, let struggle, but we ain't done. Keep on swinging, never know when we gon' land, right? Hit you with the left up a cut. Hi, I'm back. Chris Vernon, show Caesar Sportsbook. You can go to your app store. You can type in Caesar Sportsbook and you can download it. For free, you can use it legally in the state of Tennessee. New users get up to $1,000 back as a bonus bet if you lose your first wager using the code GCM1000, GCM1000. Caesar Sportsbook. Grizzlies off tonight. They'll be playing against uh, Milwaukee. 
tomorrow night. Hope you bet on Caitlin Clark last night. Shoo wee. <laughs> man, I watched that. She was she unbelievable. Was oh man, unbelievable. she was awesome. Yep. Yeah. So uh, anyway, that girls tournament's been uh, fantastic as well. So unbelievable to have Mark in studio and him throughout the week. And anybody, I will tell you guys, uh, like. I, we've talked about it a lot every time you come in here. There's a special bond between all y'all that is. I don't think people. Uh, I think it's 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 rare in professional sports for there to be something like that. Like it happens with two guys. It can happen sometimes with three guys, but four guys and then even the coach. You talked about, like, you still text with and will go out to eat with Lionel. Mm -hmm. Mark said he wit he is this week. He's yeah, meeting well, up with him. Yeah. He said he's meeting up with him while he's in town. And, like, there's a – it is unique. I will say that. And I also think that it's partly how you guys uh, – you know what? We were watching the movie. I know you haven't watched it yet. The movie's great. You watched it, right, Roser? I did watch it. So my son went with me. And, you know, he's 14. So, I mean, you're talking about when that stuff was going on, like 2013 is like the apex kind of of that. And he's, he's three right. at that time, right? He, he wasn't he has some awareness. Of that. So now he's watching all those playoff series and all those moments and all that stuff take place on there. And I try to explain to him, I said, man, like, it is hard to explain. Like, these guys became, like, rock stars yeah i was like you see the way st people still react to tony when they meet him and when they react you know people are gonna see mark when he's bopping around yeah. town or zebo whatever i'm like it's hard to describe to a kid and i'm like man if it ever takes off like it does like, i mean yeah. you see you know jaw's kind of got that right now and they do have the opportunity with john and des and jaron to have something that yeah. is similar something yeah. that's together for it. a long long time and has been through a lot of wars together um, and become that like kind of bond amongst each other. But, you know, there, throughout that run, and especially to like when the year of the West Finals, I was like, the, the sports world descends on a city when, it's, when your team makes it to the last four teams that are left. And it's hard to describe how famous and how big a deal that was here. It's just, it matters more. No, I mean, and then just to be a part of it and knowing that we all had one common goal. It wasn't no big ass little use, man. It yeah. was all us putting on our hard hats and just coming together collectively and getting something done, man. And we definitely embraced, well, the city definitely embraced that, you know, our work ethic, you know, the way we just gelled as a team, man. And once Grizz Nation get behind you, man, it kind of instill that work ethic in you to just go even harder, man. Mm -hmm. So. Big shout out to that move, that moment, that movement, man. It was it's grit and grind with me forever. You already know how I rock. <laughs> it's crazy though to think about. It. I mean, that's like, that's a decade ago. It's been a decade, man. It's definitely been. We're a old, decade. man. <laughs> I mean, having Marcus all come in here and you two are both like retired and we're talking about the good old days. Yeah. It just feels weird. Uh, man, I, it does. Everybody's man. got bad knees now. <laughs> none of us, the are, hell say, none man, of us are worth a shit. The hell say, no, I got a good, lot of good clapping for you going on. I ain't no getting out there to yeah, let me know he, he far removed yeah. from the game. Mark, 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 Mark had no interest in even attempting to try to guard Joel Embiid no, on Saturday so night. He's like, nah, I'm good on that. <laughs> no, man. A but. basketball owner, too. Yeah. He owns a basketball team. And has yeah. built it. Yes. Like, built and I'm pretty it. He's gotten sure, better and better. I'm pretty sure he got that same drive. Yep. He want to get some guys in there that's willing to come in here and compete, work on your craft, and get in and come in and play together. I'm pretty sure he got that same mindset. I think you should do the best for your son and just send him over there when he's 13 rather than you, you know, throw, I mean, you're killing the kid. So I, just send him over. Send Tell him over Desi there. you guys are going to send him to Spain, train him how to be a basketball player. And I, and I think he'll love it, man. You know he'll be under Mark's guidance. I think he'll love it. That might be an option. I'm going to talk to Desi about this later on. <laughs> hey, hey, and I'm pretty sure the wives are probably going to get together and, and, and we get together and have Sorry, a dinner. Sorry, Andre. But, but, yeah, Andre might not be. You can put him on a plate. <laughs> At the University of Memphis, he might be somewhere. 
in Europe. <laughs> Playing for Mark's team. I'm telling you, man. That's that's not a bad option. That's what these that's what these dudes do. Yeah. Like Lionel Messi's like the best soccer player ever. He left Argentina when he was 13 years old you and see what went I'm and went to Barcelona yeah. to you FC Barcelona and oh, they How do soccer been pro? and they do soccer in school. Soccer in school. That's what they do. I gotta say, hey, I gotta say too. Like Mark with the being the owner of the team, obviously Zach's got his hands in a million things, including being a record producer and everything else he's always got going. Tony's got his trucking thing and all this other stuff going on. BPS Meanwhile, Mike Conley is playing for the number one seed in the Western yeah. Conference. And that, and that's, it is so it's funny. It's crazy, and, man, the longevity and, he's and had. He is, he is shining, too. No, man. he's still great. <laughs> he is shining, man. And I, I'm looking at him. It's like his, his face is he's got still youthful. You know, he's around all those young cats, giving them wisdom. I'm pretty sure he's teaching them a little bit something on the, on the defense. And you know he was second team all defense. It's, I know. It's you remember that year? Yeah. It's crazy you look at that year, Conley, that we took him. The longevity of some of these guys. Picks two, three, four, five. Kevin Durant, Al Horford, Mike Conley, Jeff Green. All still in the still league. Still in the league and still <laughs> contributing. Shout what, out to Jeff Green, man. Champion Jeff the Green. The Durant man. draft? Odin was one. Yeah. Picks two through five. Kevin Durant, Al Horford, Mike Conley, Jeff Green. All four are either Kevin Durant still like one of the ten best players. He's, a superstar. Just, He's still a superstar. Al Let's Horford plays a big role on the number one seed yeah. in the Eastern Conference. Mike Conley plays a big role in the number one seed in the West. And Jeff Green is playing a role on a team trying to make the playoffs. Like, There's no way that's ever happened where – Every guy had a 15-year career because there's a Carmelo, a Wade, and a Bosh, but then there's a Darko. True I guess that. you'd say four of those five, right? LeBron, well, Bosh was cut short. Bosh, Wade, Bosch was cut short. Mello, and, and Bosh, Wade, Mello, and LeBron. And it feels like Dwayne Wade's been out of the league for like five years. But there's one. Uh, but what I'm saying is yeah, that's those guys trivia. all – that's that's, that's got to be the most all star games for a top five. I would yeah because out, I mean, out of each draft you well because you get LeBron's twenty <laughs> <laughs> right he gonna wipe out the competition yeah like, right? like, once you get his twenty it doesn't even matter if the other guys right. have been to two exactly but Carmelo probably went to ten all star games I bet Carmelo was a ten time all star check it oh what do you say I would. Close to Wade's it, probably Wade. eight or nine. Carmelo's exactly a ten time all star. How many's Wade? Eight or nine? Wade is a thirteen time all star. This is twelve really. The last one, you remember the twenty nineteen we were there in Charlotte. They named Dirk and oh, Dwayne yeah. Wade All Stars because it was gonna and, be their final season. And what and about Bosch? Him. Bosch double digits or no? Uh Bosch he might have he been might be eight. eleven. Ooh. God. That's all in the O3 draft. How many draft. did you say for Wade? 13. 12, really, but 13, yeah. Okay, look. And LeBron's been to, what, 20? LeBron's been So 20. To... Is it 20 or 21? 20. Okay, 20. You said Carmelo's 10. 10. Carmelo's 10. You Bosch said Wade's 11. Wade 13. 11 and Wade's 13. So we got 30, 41, 40. Jesus Christ. It's 54 All-Star games. It's a lot of All-Star games. Damn, Darko went number two. Hell, Chris Kamen went number six, and he made one all-star team. <laughs> Darko he 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 did one. So he was yeah. with the Clippers. He was killing that year. I yeah. remember that. Chris Kamen, wispy hair. Yeah, the caveman. <laughs> yeah. That's unbelievable. But yeah. Mike's class is pretty damn good. Mike's class is good. I mean, I mean that's not a bunch of all-star teams. But I guess Horford's got... Well, Durant's obviously got the most. But Durant's got a bunch. Horford's yeah. been to a handful, and... I don't – Jeff Green or uh, – Conley, I think, has been to one. Conley's yeah. been to one. Yeah. Green never made one. No. Durant's been to 14. Horford's been to, what, three? Two. Horford has nah, he was five. On, oh, five. Yeah. Damn. Well, he was put on some the respect on Horford's name, man. He was, in the, he was on the 60-win Hawks, People too. do put some respect on Al Horford's name, man. Respect. I know. I ain't gonna... Love Al Horford. Great player. It's kind of it's crazy because he's he playing big minutes for them, man. I'm talking about he matters. Shooting, I'm hitting big shots for them. I'm talking about, and the, and the team has only lost 16 games. It's, it's mind blowing. Nobody even really talking about that. Well, I, it, it, it's super fascinating that they are 11 and a half up on everybody else. But I did a whole podcast this wait, morning. Wait, what that mean? They're 11 and a half games up on second place. 
Oh, just the whole. On the Bucks. The oh, standings. Yeah. Okay, yeah. They clinched the one seed before anybody else in the East even clinched a playoff spot. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, hey, they could. See what I'm saying? Hey, I, I, we were just talking, though. Like, they are running away with it, which you would typically think is a reward. They could end up with the absolute most murderous road to a finals possible yeah. because there's a chance they're playing it's likely in fact that they would play either miami or philly second round no first, first round, round first. because those teams are uh, one of them's gonna be seven one's gonna be eight possibly i'm just saying there's a real possibility that that could be then four or five if you if you're pulling the knicks and then you got to play the bucks you could go heat I mean, you know, and the worst thing right now, but though, if you're a Milwaukee fan or Boston fan, you have got to be going crazy rooting for the Miami to overtake the Pacers. Yes. Because otherwise, they're playing 7-8, and Miami has already done what they've done to Boston in the past. And, and last year, <laughs> they knocked out Milwaukee. Like, the one or two seed is going to draw – them unless they hop they the Pacers. Have, uh, Miami right, okay, has knocked out know. Miami has knocked out Boston twice in the playoffs in the last like four or five years. They've knocked out Milwaukee twice in the playoffs. They did it to the bubble year too, Miami. The got other them. one could be you might be playing MB Sixers. Yeah. Which but, is not an eight seed. But no, that, that's very deceiving. <laughs> he, 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 before he went out, what well, he was averaging? 35 points a game? And they More added points than minutes. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. So that, that, that's kind of deceiving. And I don't know how his conditioning going to be. But, I mean, you want to go through those teams like that to get you the ring. You know what I'm saying? I, you'd rather go through them at the end. <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I mean, I'd rather get tested for a battle early. To know what I got to do. You want to play somebody crappy. The at good the start. thing is Bro, for you Embiid. Serious? You're just trying to advance. Are you serious? You're just trying to get through the first round. You don't want to play the good one first. When we won in 2008, we had to see those young, up and running, gunning Atlanta Hawks, mm -hmm. starring Joe Johnson, starring uh, T, starring Horford. We just were talking about Horford. Right after that, we had the reigning defending champions. The Pistons. Mm. Then right after that, Cleveland. Yeah. Then Kobe. Yeah. Like you can't tell That's me. That's a hard like, run. Come on, like. That's a hard run. Like you wanna, you wanna, you wanna see what you made up early, and we took Atlanta to seven. Look, but what I'm saying is, if something happens like what happened last year, where Giannis gets hurt, so he misses two games, and next thing you know, you're the one seed, and you've lost to the Heat. Now your coach gets fired and everything changes. And <laughs> Drew Holiday gets traded. See, that, and it's like, I mean, a lot got to go but wrong. But if you play somebody good at the beginning and you lose somebody for two games, like, you remember a couple years ago in that West Finals run that Dallas made, it's like they lost Luka. And that's when the Brunson thing took oh, off. Right, right. But they weren't playing right, a team right. that could beat them. They weren't right. playing a team that could beat them. If you got a harder opponent, you might have gotten – Knocked off quick. Right, exactly. You know? Well, that he, was the emergence of, of Brunson. Yeah, anyway, he, he, pretty, he pretty much showed Yeah, but I don't, like the, I don't like the way they're talking in New York right now. With Ann and OB. I, I, no, I just, with no, with no. Josh Hart said, oh, we're just playing like this is the team we have. And, you know, if they can come back, we'll be pleasantly surprised. I'm like, yeah. what? He like, I thought that? it was always we're getting Mitchell Robinson, Julius Randle, and OG and Anobi back. It was just so kind of like. they not coming back? Uh, well, they got Mitchell back. Who knows? They got Mitchell but Robinson But he still got back. the ankle thing. Yeah. Yeah, he ain't all the way 100%. No. They need Ananobi. I don't Bad. think I don't think they need Randall to make the final. They don't have to. I think they need Ananobi. He is sure. a bit inconsistent. He is a bit inconsistent. Be, well, well, Josh Hart can do it. Josh Hart grabs 15 rebounds every time I look at it. And doesn't take bad shots. Yeah, right. Generally. He's 6'4", 215. It averages like almost nine rebounds a game. He's all heart. But you Josh mean, Hart is a grit grind dude, for man. For sure. For sure. He could make the first yes. team all grit and grind team. Yeah. But I think you need Julius Randle for that that one little extra star. There you, also just needs to be a – when if everybody's going to bear, bear down on Brunson, there has to be a second – there has to be a safety valve. You're yeah, right. Yeah, man. That's why I believe he needs That's the way it was, yeah. you know. Back in the day with, like, the Isaiah Thomas Celtics. I heard Brasillo bringing this up. It's like, is it a little Isaiah Thomas Celtic-y where 
now they're going to sell out and it's like Avery Bradley's your second leading scorer. <laughs> I mean, right. You know, right. like it can't be, it can't, it, it yeah. can't be the, it, a non offensive, like super weapon. That's sure. what's, yeah, exactly what's going to happen to Minnesota. They desperately need, will need, they need towns. towns. They need Cause towns. there's nobody else for ant to get no, no. relief from. He's you know? shooting a lot of shots. If you look at his last couple of games, he shoot a lot Takes of a shots. Lot. He ain't shot. Yeah. But that's just too many shots down the stretch. And I'm looking at the Grizzlies kind of like that for next year, mm-hmm. man. With those with, with Jaron Jackson making a, a big name of his own. Needing yeah. that needing that rock. He had forty last night. Uh Desmond get back. You know Dude, what I, mean? I have been so happy with Brandon Clark. Yeah, big he shout out looks to B. Clark. like Brandon Clark. And it's all, it is big awesome. Shout out to like, B. Clark, man. It he's is back. awesome to see he's him back, back he out there. He looks like yeah. Brandon Clark, though. And he's the moving, dude, he's getting yeah. out that pick and roll, cutting real fast. Well, they, I, I, I like his move. They said last night. Active, his second I like jump, his move. Still quick. When he like went to the movement. bench last night, like, and then they brought him back in later, but like he went to the bench, and like the entire bench was up, like giving him an event, like clapping for him, dapping him up. Like, bro, when he hit a three in front of the Grizzlies bench, it was pandemonium. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> it was pandemonium in my apartment. I was like, oh, my God, let's go. I texted you immediately. I said, I cannot believe he made it. Pandemonium. They said, swing, swing. And I said, what? <laughs> Whack. Jack that joint. Nailed it. We got to celebrate Great. those. We I know. We got to celebrate the Brandon so Threes, awesome. the BC3. He really does look he like does. he's moved. I mean, that, that that's somebody that took their rehab Serious. super serious. Yeah. I want to see. Yeah, you're right. Because rehab is part of how you – how you get that carry over the way, okay, am I am I going to re-tear it? Am I, you right. get over that fear, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the rehab helps you come with that confidence, man, and to see him moving, how he's moving, it's unbelievable. Giving me life for the end of the season. We, need, we just need Dez there, too. I need Dez, Jaron, and Brandon, like regular, real minutes all the time. And I will – yes, I, w- I want to watch that. I'll enjoy watching exactly. that the rest of the season. Give me those exactly. three. Man, I'll tell you this. When we were down in Orlando – so we went and I went and played this really nice golf course on Saturday and we got back to the house and we were going to be doing Magic Kingdom Disney World on Sunday. And so I said, hey, y'all, we, we ain't got to go to the game tonight. And I have never been more happy to not go to a Grizzly game in my life yeah. because we're checking the phone at, 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 like when it first started. I mean, they were down like, what, like 70 to 30 they were or something like, like that. Oh, you hey, was, I, you was down I was in day. Orlando, and we thought about going to the game. The first quarter, it was like Probably 35 went, to 13. The first quarter, 30, 30, 30. One of my 30, buddies texted me and told me, now you guys would never know because you just pull straight into the garage. They tell me it's gotten kind of rough around their arena. I mean, I'm with a bunch of kids, too, I'd have been going with. They got like a real homeless problem going on, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You got to worry about that stuff, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? When you're but, uh, the, the, when you're out with you know, it late at night with kids, yeah, you know what I mean? Like I don't sure. I ain't trying to mess with that. I give it. I hope that's not so. But somebody did give me a heads up, like, hey man, if you are going to the game tonight, I was like, oh jeez, they that's just... not what you want to hear. That's not what you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> like, I gotta, like I gotta uh, fight a scratch fight your a head a little guy. bit. Oh, you, <laughs> hey, hey, I wanted to say, hey, I don't have a wallet. <laughs> like I really don't have anything, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They rob you. They just would be practicing. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Not practice, No, Robin. they are. They announced what? it. Uh, they, they put. Fu- they, they're doing an entire development around the arena. Property, like whole development and everything. So I guess it, I remember. I remember it's like five hundred million down. dollars They're doing a development all around the neighborhood, the, the neighborhood in the arena. I thought all the arenas, arenas was Orlando. perfectly set up, like like three, four, five blocks. Dude, from no. the hood. I'm Bro, talking about, no, uh, for real. Ask me and Roser when we went to the damn back to your place, Chicago White Sox. Oh my god! Yeah, it's god. like right by the hood. I thought that's what they do. They go get. The land Dude, the when we were walking back from the White Sox game, you know how many times we were like, <laughs> are we okay? <laughs> like, dude. Yeah, that, that's a rough area. That's everywhere. A rough, that's like a rough you, area. 
And and plus you have to walk back to where we took like the subway thing, the subway, right? Yep. That's outside? definitely a rough area. T- Tony, we do not do that when we go to Cubs games. <laughs> no, 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 I don't no, know no, why y'all Cubs Uber one working. Uh, <laughs> why y'all Uber? We took work? that. We took that. It said no cars available. L, L, the L right? L train. The L train. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what we took. Y'all wanted that experience. mistake. <laughs> 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 when that dropped us off, I'm like. Where are Which, we, bro? By the they're way, like, ballpark's right over there. I'm like, over where? <laughs> I don't know if they're renovating or if they're getting a new stadium, but the White Sox, they're either renov- like doing a massive renovation on theirs or they're building a new stadium, too. Yeah, man. The White Sox are. And then back in the day. I understood why you were so hardcore. Oh, so you just from that experience. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> the Bulls Stadium, too, it, back in the day, it used to be right, like, right, like, Two blocks away from the project. The Madhouse on Madison? Like, yeah, so Chicago then they, Stadium. They moved it. They moved it to Madison. Uh, yeah, so now it's like six, United seven Center. Blocks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, back in the day. I thought all the arenas was like that. Like, when you pull up, you go into the hood. You know what I'm saying? Just be aware. You know what I'm saying? And oh, get if you the saw, tunnel and come on out. If you saw, like, a little bit that way when FedEx Forum was first built, like it was. Yeah. Phil Jackson said it looked like Dresden after the war. <laughs> yeah, he, said we he, looked, did. he said we looked like a war torn country. Yeah. He I'm, said I'm sure. we were like, man, f this dude from Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And 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 that's what they doing now. They putting Developing all type of there, developments yeah. around it. So. Well, you want people to feel safe. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. All right. Uh, are you gonna cry on Saturday night when Mark gets his number retired? I'm gonna keep some tissue in my Gonna get head. emotional? Keep some tissue in my little handkerchief, coat, man. little handkerchief. I actually think you will get emotional. For sure, man. I mean, that, that they coming, man. You know, so I gotta look at it like, man, you know, I put in blood, sweat, and tears with him. You know, I, I done seen days where, you know, he don't wanna be bothered with nobody from losing. I done seen, you know, him, you know, get be the MVP and just look like nothing happened. But the work ethic, man, like, well, that's all I can And I know you about. haven't watched it yet either. I wanna alert everybody. Uh, the Marcus Saw documentary is up on YouTube. So for anybody that didn't take the time out and haven't watched it yet, yeah, check that watch it's it. well worth it. Because I'm definitely oh, going great. to watch it as soon as I it's leave great. here. It's outstanding. And Truly. I'm crying loud because you can't see the back of Allen Iverson's head in some of Lionel's training camp footage. And I'm like, we just going to forget Allen Iverson was on his team. <laughs> started on his team right here. That's a whole documentary no, in and of itself. You're, and, and you're in it a ton. Yeah. Yeah, you're in it. Oh, yeah, T.A., you're in it. Yeah, you're in it a bunch. Yeah, for sure. So y'all got to check that out, man. Yeah, Tune thank, in. Thanks to Marcus Gasol. Thanks to Tony Allen. Thanks to John Rosa across the glass. Thanks to Jalen back in the studio. We will be back tomorrow. Until then, we gone.